When I was a new priest, I was assigned as the chaplain and a teacher at St. Mary's Central High School here in Bismarck. It changed my life. I remember wanting so ardently for the students to know the Lord deeply, to live in friendship with Him, to find their happiness in His plan for their life. There was a small chapel in the school, and I decided to hang in that chapel large photographs and short biographies of modern saints, not just saints whom I loved, but also saints whom the students could love, could relate to, could know about and confide in. Because the saints are not long ago and far away. They're here and now. They're with us. They love us. They help us. The long arc of history can make that hard to recall, but not for every saint. For some of them, it's as though they were with us just yesterday, around the corner. I wanted to find a striking photograph of each saint so close to my students. Maximilian Kolbe is an 18-year-old Polish friar studying at the Gregorian in Rome, just about the time he registered a patent for a spacecraft, decades before his heroic death at Auschwitz. Therese of Lisieux in the courtyard of Carmel, mischief and joy dancing in her eyes, the rattle of rosary beads driving her crazy, so in love with Jesus. Pier Giorgio Frassati, that bon vivant of Torino, his arm thrown up, looking into the camera, maybe going to ask you to prom. And Gianna Beretta Mola, newly married and so happy, the sun upon her face. It was the age of Internet 1.0, and it was nearly impossible to find the images with high enough quality to enlarge them. With Gianna's image, I must have written to 50 people and had lost hope. Finally, I picked up the phone and called the foundation in Italy. Having lived in Italy, I braced myself for a long process of ultimate disappointment. I asked my question with trepidation, but the voice on the line was bright. Oh yes, that's the photo of my mom in the garden. I said, who are you? I'm Gianna Emanuela. I couldn't speak. Father, she said, give me your email address. I'll scan it and send it over to you. That was a new experience of the world for me, and it was a new friendship. I got the photo, which we framed and hung with honor. Gianna Francesca Beretta was born in Milan, Italy in 1922 to a devout and faithful family. Two of her brothers became priests, one a parish priest in Italy and the other a medical missionary in the jungles of Brazil. One of her sisters also entered the religious life and served the poor for many years in India. Jana's discernment of God's will for her led her to enroll in Milan's medical school in 1942, specializing in pediatrics, though it was rare at that time for a woman to become a physician. Jana excelled as a medical student, passionate about her mission to heal. She wrote in her personal notebook, just as the priest can touch Jesus in the Eucharist, so we doctors touch Jesus in the bodies of our patients, in the poor, the young, the old, and children. She graduated from medical school with honors in 1949, bought a Fiat Cinquecento, and opened a clinic in the little town of Mesero. She loved delivering babies and would often spend long evenings making house calls. When she was not practicing medicine, Jana's passions were mountain climbing and skiing. She said that nowhere did she feel closer to God than at the summit of a great mountain covered with snow. She was also a talented painter and an accomplished pianist and she spent much of her free time at the theater, the opera, and concerts. Jana also liked nice clothes and always dressed modestly but fashionably. One of her friends remembers borrowing her beautiful ski jackets. At the age of 32, Jana met and fell in love with Pietro Mola, a prosperous business executive and engineer. Their love letters from their engagement are filled with affection and tenderness. They were married September 24, 1955. Jana continued her medical practice even as she soon became the mother of a boy and two girls. In the fall of 1961, Jana became aware that she was expecting another child, but also discovered was a painful ovarian cyst. As a doctor, she knew that the only sure hope for saving her life was to remove the uterus, causing the death of her unborn child. The other option was surgery to remove the growth. That would allow the pregnancy to continue but it would put the mother at great risk. Jana chose the second option, telling her doctor, whatever you do, save the child. Your first concern must be for the baby. On April 20th, 1962, Good Friday of that year, Jana was admitted to the delivery room at the hospital. She quietly told her husband, 
If you have to make a decision between me and the child, do not hesitate. Choose the child. I demand it. Save the baby. The next morning, Jana gave birth to a healthy baby girl. When she woke from the anesthesia, she tenderly held the child and gazed upon her face. Then tremendous suffering seized her. After five days, she slipped into a coma. Pietro took her home, where she quietly died on Saturday, April 28th. Gianna Bredamola was not yet 40 years old. Pietro named his new daughter Gianna Manuela, and she is now herself a medical doctor. On May 16, 2004, Pope John Paul II declared Gianna a saint, an eloquent witness to the beauty of love and the sanctity of all human life.